Hi everyone, this is Sean Frangella with a new Cinema 4D and After Effects tutorial about how to 3D track a 3D object into actual live footage like this clip here. So if we look at this original shot that I took, it's just a blank plate and I've already done stabilization and time remapping and it's a shot with a three-dimensional camera move, so we're moving back in Z space and it's a little handheld and stabilized out, so we have all sorts of camera movement parallax and if we're putting an object in it since it's right near the camera we got to go full 3d so this will be the third in my tracking series about all different ways to track and composite elements into footage and this will be the more complicated one of if it's close to the camera there's camera movement and we got to figure out how to do everything to get to work and actually get a 3d object from cinema 40 tracked into footage in after effects and how to go back and forth so this will be a two-parter we'll cover first how to track it and get it set up and in the second half how to composite light and make it look like it's believable and add reflections and the shadow pass and get everything working so this will be the final shot that we're working towards and if I look in my After Effects project we have my footage that's tracked with 3D tracker and then a Cinema 4D layer with that object and then a shadow pass and a couple adjustment layers so this will be what we're working towards let's get started this will be a fun one and we'll just get right to it so in After Effects this is my footage that I'm going to be working from and as I mentioned I already did a little bit of stabilization on it so this was actually the original shot. It's a little bumpier and I shot it at 60 frames a second so we could slow it down and smooth it out. So if you are working with footage and you wanted to do that, the only difference would be running the warp stabilizer on it. So warp stabilizer on onto footage and then doing time remapping. So right click time, time stretch and slow it down if you shot high enough frame rate of footage. But I'll just start here so we can focus on the tracking. So I got this shot. It's already been smoothed out. And to get started, I'm just going to drag this to a new composition down here. So it's going to make a new composition at 1280 by 720, 2997, because that's what I rendered out the stabilized footage to. And this is a tricky shot, and this is kind of why I chose this one, because if we run the 3D camera tracker on it, it's not going to come out that great by default because the colors are a little flat. And that's good for color correction. But if you're working from a shot like this, where it's kind of mostly flat color and not really pushed, it's going to not work as well with the track. And the tracker is finished, and if I scrub through this, we can see that we're not getting any track points on our ground because it's mostly this consistent gray, and this is a problem. This track isn't going to work, even if we mess with the settings some. So what we need to do in this case, or if you have footage that's shot like this and you're running into this, is do a little prep work to push that contrast. So I'm going to just grab curves and drag it onto this. And usually you'd use this for color correction in subtle ways, but what we're going to do is use it to really blow out the contrast in the ground so we get some of that detail back. So if I really pull the contrast and push this S-curve really down, you can see that there is enough detail to pick up and kind of create track points once we do this. And this will work a lot better. So what I need to do to get the 3D tracker to see this effect is actually pre-compose this first. So I'm going to right-click, pre-compose, move all attributes so it moves this curves into a new nested comp and I'll just call this tracking container 03 or whatever you want to call it and now on the sub comp with that moved now if I run the 3D camera tracker we're going to get a much better track and it's going to pull all of that contrast from the ground and what's great is we can go back into that after the track has run and just turn that curves layer off and it will still have the 3D camera track information from when it ran it on the curves layer. So the track is done. If I go into advanced, we can see that error is 0.32 pixels, which is pretty good. And we can scrub through and see that now we're getting track points on our ground. So this is a good technique if you're ever running into problems with a shot. And there is enough detail, but it's not just not showing up. And if I turn up my track point size up here, you can see that there's a lot in the background too. And this is good. This is going to be enough to work with. So if I scrub through, you can see now we're getting this track and we have enough for a ground and we'll be able to put some stuff in it. So since this is a full 3D scene and we're not just putting stuff up in the sky, we're putting stuff on the ground and we want to lock it to the ground and orient our scene, what we want to do is move this target around in between these track points until it shows up at a point where it relates to the plane that our ground is on. So if I get right here in between these three in this case, and it's going to be different pretty much anytime you run a track, 
I can right click on this target and set ground plane and origin, and that's gonna set the orientation of my scene. And then I'm just gonna grab a couple track points where I would wanna put stuff, and I'll just grab a couple back here for reference of if I wanna lock stuff back there. And with some track points selected, I'm going to right click and create six nulls and camera, and that's gonna set up my 3D scene. So now if I look at my top view, and zoom out a bit, we can see that now I have this 3D scene set up of this track camera moving in and here's my null, so here's my little ground and there I can see there's those factories in the background and the 3D track is working and this footage is just sitting behind everything as a 2D layer of just the footage. So that's important to note that the actual footage is just this layer that's behind this 3D world that we're making in After Effects. So now that this is set up, if I scrub through, you can see my nulls are tracking and one little test that's good to do is if I make a new solid, so I'll just call this this ground solid, is to put a solid in here, make it a 3D layer and just do a quick check to make sure this is all locking on and this will give us a better idea. So I'm gonna make this 3D and I'm gonna shift parent it to that ground null. So that's track three in this case and I'll shift and parent it and that's gonna move it. And then with the rotate tool up here, pressing W, I can just shift this around loosely, or I could use the rotation and orient it that way. And I'm just gonna twirl this around so it looks like it's on the orientation of my ground. And then I'm just gonna press T to turn the transparency down. And then I'm just gonna quickly scrub through my footage or press zero to play just to make sure that this is locking. This is a good test to do early in the process because if you do this whole process and get all the 3D stuff working and, and then you figure out your track isn't working, it's gonna be a big problem. You're gonna have to start over. So I could do the same thing with one in the distance. And this is again, just you know some prep work to make sure we're not running into problems. So I'll make a new solid again or command Y and call this background solid. Same thing, make that a 3D layer and I'm gonna shift parent it to this factory and just rotate it around and what's great about this whole process is it, we have our whole 3D track scene. So if we wanted to put stuff on the ground, we could. If we wanted to put stuff on these buildings in the background, we could really recreate an entire 3D scene. So if I play through this, those solids are all locking on. That's great. I have my 3D scene. We're moving right along and ready to send this information over to Cinema 4D. So what we have here is our track shot, and here's my main composition that we just made from the original footage. So I'll just rename this 3D track 03 because this is the third time I've done this process well, after doing some tests. And just a workflow thing for me, I'm gonna duplicate that. So before I get all crazy into 3D, I have a copy of this in case anything gets screwed up and I can go back to it. And then I'm gonna open this one. And now we have our 3D track scene, everything working. We could in After Effects add some text if we wanted to just add text to this track and have 2D stuff, but we wanna go as far as we can. We wanna talk about real 3D objects and reflections and all the stuff you could do back and forth between Cinema 4D and After Effects. So not just put 2D stuff, but let's really talk about making stuff 3D and putting 3D objects in three-dimensional worlds of footage. So to send this into Cinema 4D, if we're in Creative Cloud, what we wanna do is I'm going to go to my footage and I'm going to actually grab all of these nulls because we'll send all of this track information over. And I'm going to right click and create 418 nulls and cameras. And sometimes it just says nulls because I really just need the nulls. And I'll do that and it'll run. And if it just says nulls, that's fine and probably better because I'm going to have to go in and delete that duplicate camera. But if it does say camera when you're on the tracking footage for the second time, not a big deal. We can just go in and delete that. So now in my project, I have 418 nulls. So I have this whole scene set up. And again, there's my duplicate camera. I'll just delete that. And you would never do this in After Effects really because you don't need this much data to pin stuff to. But what we can do in Creative Cloud for After Effects is now for this project, we can go to File, Export, Max on Cinema 4D Exporter. And then I can create a Cinema 4D file from this track data straight from After Effects. So I'll call this 3D track object 03 in this case. And now what we can do is go into Finder and grab that file. So I have that in my C4D file. And if we're using Studio, you can just drag that into Cinema 4D and open it up and it'll launch Cinema 4D. Or if you're using Cinema 4D Lite and you wanna do this whole thing in After Effects, 
you can just drag this file back into After Effects. So I'll drag this in and I already made a C40 folder just to keep things organized. And in After Effects, if you wanna launch Cinema 4D Lite, you go to Edit, Edit Original, and this will launch Cinema 4D Lite within After Effects. So we'll just do it this way. And now in my scene, you can see that I have my whole three-dimensional world from After Effects sent into Cinema 4D. And if I pop open this little null, I have my camera, all my track nulls that I can use to put objects into and keep it in the world, as well as those solids. So I can just go turn those solids off because I don't need them. And now if I made a floor up here, it's gonna orient to that origin that we sent in After Effects. And I'll just turn that off. But what's great about this is this is my whole scene. And if I wanted a reference of what the hell this actually means, because I can kind of see that it's the factories, but I might want to see an actual video. I can go into Finder and I'll grab that original footage. So this is my clip. And I'm just going to drag that into my materials in Cinema 4D. And I can click no. And that's going to make a new material of this video. And what I can do is up here, I'll make a background and I'll drag this on to the background so it'll texture it. And then it might not play. So it looks like it is playing. And if it's not playing, you can go on the material to editor animated preview and then it'll play. And sometimes it's kind of off for whatever reason, but it will line up when we send it to After Effects. But this just helps to kind of get a reference of, okay, now I can see where the ground is. And again, I'll just turn that off because I don't necessarily need it. But what I can do is anything I bring in as far as a 3D object, which could be anything. So I'll just use a sphere for the sake of discussion. I can grab any of these track nulls. So if I look in After Effects real quick, I can see where all these are lining up. So there's my ground. And I'm just going to grab this track null right here and scroll down and find that one. So it is, in my case, track null number 90. What I can do is grab any object like the sphere and just go down and put it in 90. And then on the sphere, go to coordinates and just zero all of these out. And that's going to move it to exactly that null. And then I can just look from my side view and slide that up so it's sitting on the ground. So you could do this with any 3D object. And if you're in light, you can go to the content browser over here and go to presets, light, models, and get all sorts of models. So if you look in Hawaii, there's a soccer ball and some tiki torches and stuff. And if you're in the full studio, same thing. If I take a look at the same file, and this is, it opened up in R15 full studio. I can go to same thing, content browser, presets, and I have a bunch of other stuff in here, but you can look at, as an example, the broadcast folder and go to 3D objects. And there's tons of stuff in here. So if you just wanted to test stuff out, you can get out to sports and you can get all sorts of stuff or you can go to miscellaneous and there's a bunch of other stuff or you can obviously make your own stuff you can make 3d robots and put them in but anything you want to drag into this you know maybe if you wanted a giant magnifying glass if i double click this and press t to scale it up you know we could have a giant magnifying glass tracked in or whatever you want but i'm just going to use a cube because i want to talk about reflections and environment maps too so i'm going to go back to my track scene in cinema 4d light and I got my sphere that I've lined up and now if I scrub through this, you can see that it's locking on and it's within this world. So now if I save this file, file save or command S and go back into After Effects, what I can do is bring this Cinema 4D file, so it's right here, into the scene. And before I do that, I can actually just delete all these extra nulls because we only needed those to send them to Cinema 4D. So I'm just going to click and then shift click the bottom one and just delete all those new ones. And then I'm going to bring this Cinema 4D file in. And it's going to render default on render software, which is fine. If we wanted to see final render, we can go to final. And I'll just turn these solids off. And now if I press 0 and RAM preview and let a bit of this play, we can see that this is all lining up. It's a 3D object. It's a Cinema 4D file. It's sitting on top of this footage and the 3D scene in After Effects. And it's an actual three-dimensional object that lines up. So if we're in R15 or Cinema 4D Lite, how this is working is anytime I update the Cinema 4D file, so I'll just go back over here and say drag this pink material on it and then save. Whenever I save, it's going to update it. So once I add a bunch of other details, light the scene, and save it, then it's going to send it back over and all link together. So 
that's tracking. We're getting a start on it. And if we wanted, let's say, let's just put another one in there for the sake of discussion. I'll grab another null. So this one over here is track 107. If I wanted, say, another smaller sphere. So I'll grab this first one and I'll just scale it up a bit. Again, just for the sake of discussion. And then I'm going to hold command and duplicate that with the left arrow and then put it in 107 and then zero all these out and do the same thing. Just scale it down a bit and then look from the side, move it up. So it's sitting on my ground plane, save this file, go back to After Effects. It's going to all update. And now I have two of these three dimensional objects sent straight back over into After Effects and it's all rendering. But this obviously does not look real. And we have the first half of this done. We have the technical part of getting the track in After Effects, sending that to Cinema 4D, lining up the objects. Now what we need to do in the second half of this video is use all of our references in this shot to look at where the lighting is coming from, how much grain is on the footage, what the, should be reflected in this, and work back and forth between Cinema 4D and After Effects to really composite this in there because it's all lining up and tracking, but this does not look real. It doesn't look like it's composited. And if you watch some of the previous ones on tracking that I've put up, that's the big part that's going to sell it is not just the technical tracking or whether it's 2D tracking or 3D tracking, but you know, really working the compositing. So making it look like it's real, making it look like it's the same graininess, the same colors, the same environment that the shot actually has. So that's what we'll get to in the second half of this video. Thanks for watching, and as always, be sure to subscribe on YouTube and Vimeo.com slash Sean Frangella, and check out the Facebook page at Facebook.com slash Vital if you want to ask questions, talk about 3D compositing, Cinema 4D animation, or request tutorials. And thanks for watching. Be sure to pick this up at the next video, and we will talk about actually compositing this thing into there.